everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a mixed media art journal page that I made in my five and a half by eight and a half inch Dilusions journal. That's the small one. I've had this for a long time. As I was flipping through the pages, I realized that I think some of the pages are from 2015. So <laughs> it's an old book. I want to finish it up. Uh, I just have two, two empty spots and then the cover to do and then this book will be done. So I decided to do something that I have done a lot in the past and not so much recently called um, art from the desk. <clears throat> basically means using up the two scrapbooks boxes that I have. I have a small one that's like an oval shape on my desk and then I have another one by my feet under my desk with for larger scraps. And when I don't feel like sorting my scraps or when I just have some little thing that I got in Happy Mail or something and I just I just want to store it for use later, I put them in these these plastic containers to use for collage because as you know, I love collage. Love love love. It's what I do the very most. Um of any of the things that I do with my, with all my different projects. I just like to glue stuff to stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a love of mine. So I grabbed my two boxes and I just went through and quickly pulled out some things that I thought I could use on a page without any, any plan, without any idea of what I was gonna do. I just grabbed some stuff that kind of coordinated together as far as color wise, some purples, lavenders, pinks, um, light pink, light blue, things like that that I thought went together and I started my page. And the, fir the well, first one I grabbed was this piece of deli paper that had some uh, stenciling on it, which was from a gel plate. Um, when I, the way that I, a, a very common thing that I do with, with uh, the gel plate is I will put a dark color underneath, put a stencil over and then pull out the color from the holes of the stencil so that I can add a different color usually multiple colors. And so that's what that is, is a piece of deli paper that I cleared out the the paint in between from. So it's kind of a reverse image of a stencil. <clears throat> and then I found this little stamp, postage stamp. And it has uh, a dragon and some castles. It's a forever stamp that I got on Happy Mail. I, I very often on Happy Mail, rip off the stamps. If they're cute stamps, you know, not just the boring ones, but cute ones, I will keep them and use them in collage. And this whole page ended up being inspired by that stamp. So I wanted to showcase the stamp and I had this little um, tag from a piece of clothing, you know, a hang tag from a piece of clothing. And so I put the stamp with its cancellation bars and then some other little bits of collage on the tag that I plan on putting on the page. That's like my inspiration right there. It's going to be right exactly where I put it. And then I decided to create a scene like or similar to the one on the stamp. So I picked some of the lighter colors. This particular one is lavender, although in some of the pictures it looks silver. It's because it has a metallic sheen on it and it also has been embossed. So it has bumpy flowers on it. And I started my castle, uh, my turret, my first turret is made out of that. Then the second uh, turret is made out of, um, you know when your printer decides that it wants to test itself randomly and it just starts printing crap, you know, if that ever happened to you? <laughs> well, that's a piece of, of the test paper and it just has these hash mark lines on it and, and <coughs> I thought it was kind of cool, even though I didn't tell my printer to do that. Um, I thought it was kind of cool, so I kept it, and that was just a little scrap, and I made my second turret out of that, and then I was using this lavender polka-dotted scrapbook scrap from somewhere, I don't even know where it came from, to make my conical tower tops. And then I made another little um, turret out of that same lavender, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the short fat turret down at the bottom, that was a tag that I had cleaned off a stencil, like when I spray with a stencil, there's always this big bunch of it left on the stencil. And if you just turn that over and flop it onto something, it'll make a mark. 
And that's what that is. It's, it, I could tell it's that um, Lacey Mandala stencil that I have <coughs> with different color sprays. I was spraying through the stencil and then made a stencil print on a tag, threw it in the bucket. You know, these are the things that I have. Then this piece was obviously a gel print, uh, six by six, probably a cleanup from all the stuff that I had put, been putting on my six by six, because I often will use the six by six and the 12 by 12 together and use the six by six kind of like a uh, palette. And I'll put different colors on it and roll them out and then put then pick those up and put them on my other plate with the brayer. But it's beautiful. It's it's a uh, got a really nice bright pink with some orange and stuff on it and so I decided to make the dragon that is curving around the castle with that so I'm not measuring I'm not drawing I'm not fussing I'm just cutting out these pieces and, and sticking them on there um, it's as simple as that it really is I, I don't uh, worry too much about things. I know that 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 shape is kind of weird, but I know that part of it is going to be covered by that turret, so I'm not too worried about that section in the middle that kind of looks segmented and weird. Um, not a problem. So <laughs> I do put the turret back on there and I cover up that one weird section. I'm putting the other ones, the towers and turrets, around I also know that this blank section down at the bottom is going to be covered by some sort of wings because in my world, dragons have wings. And I also know that I had a pattern, a drawing of some of a butterfly wing that I made at some point for some project that it was just like one butterfly wing um, that is printed on a piece of paper. And I grabbed that. So I think I'm going to try to use that for the dragon wings. And I'm just continuing to fill it in, put in the towers, put in the tops. Um, the one tower to the extreme far right is actually a piece of paper that had a print of a, a clock on it. So therefore, it must be a clock tower. Ha ha! <laughs> uh, you can't really tell that it's a clock anymore, but it is, um, it's a uh, it's Canvas Court Brands piece that's just, just a scrap left with a little clock printed on it. So then this is the butterfly wing. I cut, started cutting it apart because it was way too large and I needed somehow to figure out these wings for the dragon. So I just started cutting, cutting and trimming and uh, making them smaller. They no longer really look like butterfly wings anymore, but they could be dragon wings, who knows? <laughs> so I put those on and that does a good job of covering that blank spot there that was bothering me. And then I grab out another piece of paper or a few pieces of paper trying to find something that's the same color as that piece of paper that I was using for the, the dragon because um, I ran out of paper. I used it all up. <laughs> the whole six by six piece was, you know, pretty much used up. So I find this tag that had a bunch of sample-y stuff on it, but it's got the right colors. And so I decide to use it to draw my dragon's face, head, whatever, top part of the neck. And um, I do that with a pencil by just kind of holding it in place and then drawing where I think it should go and then cutting that out. And now my dragon has a face, which is a good thing because it would, right? <laughs> It wouldn't be a faceless dragon. You'd be wondering what that thing, what all that pink stuff around the castle is if it didn't have the face. It would completely ruin the whole effect. And I think that those colors match pretty well. Um, that is a manila tag, so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting to glue it to glue down. Of course, I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel, and I have a wet baby wipe, and I just kind of press, 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 press to get it to uh, stick down eventually. So then this is just a little strip of kind of a, a light, light pink peach color. And I cut it to be the um, uh, plates on the back of the dragon, like you know, the plates that stick up. You know what I'm talking about, the spiky things. I make it into a long line and I 
glue that down and then all the left out pieces that I cut out as I was cutting along I used for the rest of the the body of the dragon the little plates at some point I get a little bit confused as to which are they going up or are they going down because <laughs> you know you know the way a dragon would twist and turn um, some of them would be going in one direction some would be going in another so <clears throat> then I have this one area up here at the top that's kind of bothering me needs something so I try to some different things I end up using those that stamped tissue you know you sometimes will um, swap stamped designs and you just stamp them in archival ink on on cheap tissue paper and then they can be glued on to things and they look as if you've stamped it on there and it's a, it's a good way to do uh, art journal pages because sometimes stamping is hard in a book like this because the pages aren't completely flat you might not get a good image so it's always fun to have those little bits that are stamped on tissue and I just decided to put the three little uh, flowers up there for no particular reason <laughs> so then I have these three inks on my desk uh, kind of a turquoise one a blue one and this uh, yellowy peachy colored orangey one they're Brea Reese ink that is glitter ink and they are really glittery I know you can't tell <clears throat> very well on the um, the video that's just how video is you can't see sparkles in video but when you look at the pictures at the end you'll be able to see that there is a lot of mica and glitter in these inks so I went over the wings and the um, the body of the dragon and its little spikes <clears throat> with the yellowy orange one and it made it very sparkly so then I took the blue one but it was way too dark so I had to water it down a lot with water which made it less glittery because that of course dilutes the glitter but um, I decided to paint in the background with the blue um, I just decided to make it sky I was gonna leave it white but then eh, didn't look right so I did that with the blue Bria Reese ink these aren't the alcohol inks that she has this is actually a water-based ink that's I think it's just called glitter ink and I will look up um, I'll look up the links to see if I can find it I think I purchased it at Tuesday morning though so it might have been on clearance so then I wanted to jazz up the wings a little bit more so I removed a little bit of the color to give them a highlight and um, I did that just by putting a wet brush on there and then blotting it's, it's subtle it's very subtle then I just started decided to start doing my detailing so I had added a unicorn horn on the dragon so it's a, a unidragon or a dragacorn <laughs> I don't know with butterfly wings <laughs> I mean you don't have to be realistic if it's if it's a fantasy stuff right you can make whatever you want so I'm using my Stabilo all pencil the black one to go around and add some shadows and details and I'm blending with my water tank brush and uh, it does make the things having those shadows around the edges blended out makes the things that you have stuck on stand out from the background and also make them look more like they're part of the composition if you just stick it on there I, I think that it should always be done um, that's just my personal opinion of course I am kind of obsessive about putting lines around things anyway uh, I like that look I think I'm an illustrator at heart <laughs> so I like to put lines around things it's just uh, but I also like to blend the lines out and make them a little bit more watery and interesting um, than just making a straight line with a marker or something so I just think that helps uh, helps you figure out what's going on in this page because otherwise how would you know it would, it's all kind of um, the same tone we have different colors but the tone is all the same with the exception of the dragon which is very bright but the castle is all kind of the same tone the background is the same tone and so the having the lines really uh, did in this case make a huge difference now you can see there's a castle you can see it's a dragon wrapped around the castle like um, what is in the the, the postage stamp 
so then I have these new brush markers that um, Peg sent me, uh, kind of like the clean color markers, but a different brand. She, she said she got them on clearance at Hobby Lobby, I think. And um, I use a little bit of them to add some color here and there. That fluorescent yellow one actually did make a really interesting highlight on the wings. Again, hard to see in the video, but I think you'll be able to see it really well on the photos at the end of the, the video. Then I got my white Posca pen and added in some highlighted areas. I needed to, of course, make something stand out like the teeth um, in the dragon's mouth, its eyeball, its unicorn horn, and black Posca pen as well to just do a little bit of pen work. Just a little bit, not going crazy here. I think the collage speaks for itself, but I did add some highlights to the wings and some little scaly marks. And uh, I think also to the plates on the background, the back of the dragon. I think I added white highlights to those too at some point. Oh, I drew some little windows on this clock tower. That's still making me laugh. And I don't know, what else did I do? Can't even remember. Oh, I know I put a word on there. So I hope that you're enjoying this video. I always say these things, but they're still important. Every time I say them, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Interact with me. Um, of course, you can uh, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells. That's really important uh, for me if you turn on your notification bells. And then you can also share this on Pinterest. And if this is your last video, it would be really great if you went to a person's channel that has a million or two million subscribers and end your YouTube viewing experience on their video instead of mine. Apparently that does make a difference. So I have these stickers that somebody sent me recently in Happy Mail and I decided to use them because they were the right kind of fun funky stickers that, and I put the word fantasy, stuck them down, sealed them up with some matte gel medium and then instead of coloring inside the stickers I took that blue sparkly ink that was still left on my palette and colored around the outside of them to leave them white and make them stand out from the background. So water brush again, picking up that ink and uh, blending it out around the word fantasy, which is what this page is all about. Because I don't think that dragons are real. I wish they were, but I don't think they are. So, and certainly not uh, dragacorns or uni, unigons <laughs> with butterfly wings. So, yeah. Of course, then I had to go back in with my white and touch it up because I messed up, of course. And, um, I think, uh, yes, of course, I have this uh, Wink of Stella. Is it a Wink of Stella? No, it's not. It's the Spectrum Noir version of Wink of Stella. So it's it's a clear glitter pen. And because that glittery ink made the dragon glittery, I went over a lot of the other elements with that clear glitter. And you should be able to see it somewhat in the pictures, although it will not still not be as sparkly as it is in real life. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.